Hi folks, it's Marvin Music uh, with MedicareSchool.com and uh, tonight's um, uh, edition of what we call Medicare Monday, where every Monday at 5 o'clock I take a topic that I think is essential for you to uh, know and understand, and uh, we dig into that topic. Um, uh, we always uh, try to uh, highlight items that I think are essential. Uh, many of you who have watched these before know that kind of my philosophy is as you're going into Medicare and making your Medicare decisions, uh, do you have to know everything that there is to know about Medicare before you can make great Medicare decisions? And the answer to that is no, you don't. Uh, you're not going to become an expert. I've been in this business a long time and I still continue to learn. Uh, however, do you need to know some things about Medicare before you start making decisions? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. And that's really the whole goal of Medicare Mondays, to take topics that are uh, essential for you to understand um, and to really kind of dig down into some of the details of these topics so that you're very clear on what you're doing. Because really our goal as a company is to make sure that you have confidence in your Medicare choices, that you clearly understand uh, what you're doing, uh, what your options are, and then with confidence you make that choice. All right, and so that's what we're going to do. Now, uh, we all know this is a very busy time of the year. This is the uh, open enrollment season for Medicare. Um, uh, this is really the time in which people that have Advantage plans or uh, uh, prescription drug plans are able to switch those plans October 15th to December 7th. If you do decide to make a switch during this period of time, the new plan that you're going with uh, will go into effect on January the 1st. All right, so uh, I have a, a tremendous amount of uh, um, information available online. Uh, we're on YouTube and um, Instagram and um, TikTok and all the different social media platforms, certainly Facebook, as you know. And so we get a lot of feedback from people about um, uh, the materials that I teach, uh, our, our position on certain products, and uh, people oftentimes will say to me and really accuse me of being very anti-advantage uh, plans. Okay, in fact, uh, I do live workshops uh, in the Kansas City metro area where our home office is. Again, we're a nationwide company and do business all over the country, but our, our home office is in Overland Park, Kansas. In fact, in here just an hour, I'll be at a live workshop speaking to a group of about 50 people at a live workshop. And so uh, uh, we're really everywhere uh, teaching and have been educating people now for 15 years. Uh, the, really, the, um, uh, the, the motto uh, of our company is this, that we want to be the nation's most trusted resource for Medicare education and enrollment assistance, and we strive to do that. And so because uh, we are committed to education, we have so much out there, we have people that accuse me of uh, being uh, biased and that as though I uh, do not like Advantage plans. And folks, uh, that absolutely is not true. Okay, now I have learned a lot in the last 15 years about this business and uh, how uh, Medicare uh, plans work, be it supplements and drug plans and Advantage. So I certainly have a lot of very strong opinions. But I want you to know that I am, I am not anti Advantage plans. In fact, there, in fact, there are several uh, situations where I recommend people being on Advantage plans. Now, again, we write in our, our practice. We have we write a little over about thousand policies every month, so we write a lot of business. Uh, but uh, uh, of those people that are going into Medicare new, uh, those thousand or more that we write every month, about 75% uh, of them are choosing supplemental plans, and 25% are going with Advantage plans. Uh, and so we are not anti-Advantage plans. We write them all the time. Uh, but uh, there are times when someone should not get an Advantage plan. I'm going to show you why in just a minute. But the question is, am I anti-Advantage plan? The answer is no, I, I'm not. We write them. I recommend them. Now, let me tell you the situations where I think it is best to take an Advantage plan. Number one, if you qualify for Medicaid. Now, remember, there's two programs when it comes to health insurance. One's Medicare, and that's for people that have paid into the Medicare tax system for at least 40 quarters, uh, turning 65, or they came in through the disability system. But they're eligible for Medicare. That is a totally uh, a federal uh, funded program uh, for those that are 65 or, again, those less than 65 if they're on disability through Social Security. Medicaid, however, is a federal and a state program. Pretty much uh, um, each state controls the Medicare, uh, excuse me, the Medicaid program, but they get federal funding. All right, and so that's state and federal, but, but really directed through the state. So Medicaid, though, is for a limited people, and that is for those that have very limited income as well as limited assets. All right, and, and just so you know, uh, that's probably uh, maybe 5% of the population. Uh, not many people qualify for Medicaid because of its uh, income and um, asset status. All right, but 
if someone does qualify for Medicaid, especially a full Medicaid because there are different statuses of Medi Medicaid and the different um, uh, uh, options for assistance, uh, but if they qualify for Medicaid, then I think uh, being on a Medicare Advantage plan is, is a wonderful option um, because they probably, if they're that low income, low assets, probably could not afford a Medicare supplemental plan anyway. All right, and so uh, I think it's good when someone has Medicaid. Secondly, for those that are on Medicaid, uh, they have what we call uh, dual SNP plans. And that dual means they're dual eligible. They're eligible for Medicare as well as Medicaid. And these dual eligible plans to get some additional funding by the government uh, to help people uh, to lower their prescription drug costs and their co-pays and their out-of-pocket expenses that they would typically have. The government will help them, all right? And so I think it's wonderful for people that qualify for Medicaid to have a dual uh, special needs plan. And uh, what will happen is then those benefits will be coordinated with their provider as well as uh, um, uh, the Advantage plan as well as Medicaid. And so Medicaid will be basically in the, um, the second payer position. So the Medicare Advantage plan pays first and Medicaid is going to pay second. And it's a wonderful arrangement. Uh, the only negative I see with that is that when uh, Medicaid's a part of the uh, financial equation, then uh, that person does have to go to providers that take Medicaid. And not all providers are going to take Medicaid. And so they're going to be limited, but still probably couldn't afford a supplemental plan anyway, since they're going to get this assistance for uh, all their uh, cost sharing as well as their Part B premium. All right. And so, again, I recommend it if someone has Medicaid. Secondly, I would recommend uh, an Advantage plan if someone uh, qualifies for VA benefits. Now, let me clarify. Uh, this is not necessarily someone that's retired from the military. That's another option. I'm going to talk about that. I'm talking about those of you that served our country for maybe four years, six years, 10 years, but you didn't retire from the military. And so, so you're eligible to get health care services through the VA system, the VA hospital system. And if you have jumped through the appropriate hoops to know exactly what you qualify for and you're happy with that uh, amount of uh, assistance uh, that the VA will provide for you and you've had a good experience at your local VA hospital or the different uh, things that you needed uh, through the VA system, if you're happy with that, then I would definitely get an Advantage plan. Okay, I uh, wouldn't get a supplemental plan because again, you're happy with the VA. What I would do in that situation is I would enroll into Medicare A and B and get an Advantage plan. And the reason for that is because now you have a second option. You have a civilian option. Uh, if you're going to the VA, that's a fully, you know, government uh, plan. Uh, they're not going to bill Medicare and Medicare, Medicare is not going to pay them anything anyway. So they're a separate entity and each of those entities uh, will not bill one another. And so you use the VA when you want to. Uh, I love the fact that uh, they have a, a wonderful prescription drug plan that is credible uh, through the VA. Uh, you get your prescriptions there and even high cost medications. You usually have a very uh, low copay. Uh, normally, most people not right now are paying about $9 copay. It could be a medication that, you know, would retail for five, $600 or above and you just simply have a very reasonable copay. So I like that. So again, if you're happy with the VA, uh, you're, you like going there and you're probably going to go there most of the time, I would get my, my meds through the VA uh, and I would use the VA when I I want it. So then what I would do is I would do a Medicare Advantage only plan. It's called an MA only plan with no prescription drug as part of that uh, because there will be some additional benefits to that. They may even uh, reduce your Part B premium with that. Um, and then you also have a civilian option. So let's say you're traveling somewhere and uh, you just maybe have an emergency situation. We want to jump, uh, drop into a mini clinic and maybe VA won't cover that. Well, uh, your Advantage plan will do so. And so again, you use Advantage when you want to and use the VA system when you want to. And uh, again, the only thing you have to do is be enrolled in A and B to be able to have that option. So again, I recommend it there. Uh, uh, thirdly, anyone that uh, is retired from the military, uh, you are eligible for what is called TRICARE for life. Uh, you had TRICARE insurance while you're in the military and asked TRICARE for life. And again, it is wonderful. And uh, people that have that, I, I don't think it'd be a, a good use of your money to get a supplemental plan. Why? Because it just simply would put you in, a, of, of an, in an overinsured position. Uh, wouldn't do that. I think it would, frankly, would be a waste of money uh, because TRICARE is a, a wonderful uh, secondary insurance. Now, you have the option to stay in A and B and have TRICARE as your secondary uh, payer. Uh, uh, TRICARE will certainly coordinate with uh, Medicare and they will um, be in the second payer position. They'll pick up most of any co-pays or uh, deductibles that you would have. 
Uh, and so that's an option. But, but what we also have found, many, many uh, uh, people that qualify for TRICARE for Life are enrolling into Advantage plans, and it makes sense to do so. And here's why. Because again, I would get your, your uh, prescriptions through uh, the TRICARE coverage. Uh, you don't have to worry about donor hole there. Uh, it's very wonderful uh, 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 formularies. And so again, I, I would get my, my meds uh, using TRICARE for Life for prescriptions. But I've enrolled into an MA-only plan, which is a Medicare Advantage-only plan, meaning no prescription drug embedded. And so what will happen is if you enroll in that Medicare Advantage plan, again, you're going to get all the perks that TRICARE doesn't give you. Uh, you'll get some dental benefit, a vision allowance, a hearing aids, a gym membership, uh, possibly a Part B reduction uh, to your, your, your Part B premium. All those things come as a package to you uh, as, um, as someone who's retired with TRICARE for Life. We call those honor plans or patriot plans. And again, I think it's brilliant uh, for those that have TRICARE for Life to do that. And the reason why is because TRICARE uh, will pick up all the co-pays and any deductible that you have on your Advantage plan. Uh, and so, in other words, they'll coordinate those benefits. Uh, and so, in that situation, what would happen? You'd enroll in A and B. Uh, you'd enroll into an Advantage plan, and any time you went to a doctor or the hospital, uh, remember, not a pharmacy, but to the doctor or hospital, you'd give them your Medicare Advantage card as well as your TRICARE card. And any copay you have or uh, uh, any deductible or cost sharing, uh, the balance of that bill is going to go to TRICARE for Life, and they're going to cover you. And so you really you have the best of both worlds. Uh, I'd certainly be on a PPO plan, so uh, that gives you almost unlimited options for doctors and those kind of things. Uh, but, but the whole point is I would recommend it if you have tried care for life to be on an Advantage plan. Uh, really the same thing is true if you are a retired civil servant and you have uh, what is called federal employee health benefits. That's called FEHB. And if you qualify for FEHB, just like uh, retired military people uh, on TRICARE for Life, we recommend FEHB people look at an option of having an MA-only plan. Get your prescriptions filled through your FEHB coverage, which is probably Fed Blue or maybe GEHA, and uh, they'll take care of the prescription side. And on the medical side, all you do is simply, again, pull out your Medicare Advantage uh, card. You're enrolled in A and B. You have the Advantage. Uh, that's going to pay first. The balance then goes to FEHB, and FEHB will coordinate uh, those benefits um, uh, with the Advantage plan. Again, probably pick up all your copays and all your cost sharing. And so you should be really, uh, really zero out of pocket. Now, the beautiful thing about that is if you're uh, retired from the civil service from the government, uh, you know on Fed Blue or GEHA, you're getting an $800 a year credit towards your Part B premium. So that reduces that. Plus an MA only plan, you're going to get probably $50 to $100 a month uh, credit towards your, uh, towards your Part B premium as well. So we get those Part B premiums drastically down uh, by doing uh, that particular option. So again, I think it's very wise for people that are FHB to get um, uh, Advantage plans. Okay, And so that's the list. So let's, let's review Medicaid, VA, TRICARE, FE, FEHB. Uh, I think it's smart to get a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, and so uh, also uh, another group of people, those of you that are in a very, very tight budget. In other words, you, it's difficult to, to really make ends meet uh, and um, you just don't have extra, extra cash on a monthly basis to, to buy a supplemental plan. Uh, and so then I would tell you, uh, don't get one <laughs> uh, because if you can't afford it, you won't keep it for sure. Uh, so when you go on Medicare or you're considering these decisions, uh, get an Advantage plan. Uh, I wouldn't uh, put myself in a position where uh, it's going to be uh, difficult for you to make it financially. And because now going into that Advantage plan, you're going to pay something. You're just not going to pay a premium to that Advantage company. You still got to be enrolled in Medicare uh, A and B, so you're going to pay your B premium. But again, if things are really extra tight, what you can do is you can actually apply for what's called a Medicare savings program. And it doesn't mean you're on Medicaid, but they do have other options for them to give you some assistance to reduce your Part B premium and maybe to help you with your drug costs as well. And so I think that's a very good option if you have a tight budget. Again, uh, we talk to people all the time, if you can't afford this extra premium to get a supplemental plan, don't do it. Uh, get that Advantage plan. Let's just make sure that uh, we're going on the best plan we can. And certainly, I, I believe the PPOs are, are going to be your best option if you do take an Advantage plan. So again, those of you with tight budgets, you need to be on Advantage plans because it's just going to be putting you in a system where, yes, you have to pay, but you're just going to pay as you go, pay as you go, and pay as you go. And uh, those are going to be some reasonable co-pays. All right. And so that group of people. So uh, there's another group of people. And I'm being a little bit sarcastic here, uh, but I, I want to make sure you know that uh, if you, this is you now, I'm saying if you have a crystal ball um, and you can look into the future, you have some of the means where you can look into the future 
and you know uh, with certainty that you're never going to need any, any, any serious uh, healthcare services, meaning, boy, you know you'll never need a knee replacement or a hip replacement or a shoulder replacement or, or you're never going to get cancer and nothing's ever going to happen to you where you're going to need some really, uh, uh, you know, severe uh, uh, healthcare services. And, and if that's you and you have that, then you know what I would do? I'd take an Advantage plan. Okay, why? Because you're probably uh, not going to need much services the rest of your life, and so enroll in that Advantage plan. All right, uh, and so and it's and it's fine to do that if you have that kind of confidence. Now, I, again, I'm being a little bit sarcastic because none of us know for sure what's going to happen in the future. But if you're confident of that, go ahead, save that premium dollar. Uh, it's no problem whatsoever. Okay, and so the other uh, group of people that um, uh, may want to take an Advantage plan. Again, I'm being sarcastic here. And that is if you want to enroll into a plan uh, that's going to pay the agent that's working with you the highest commission, all right? Because that's exactly why agents push Advantage plans, because uh, we get paid uh, greater commissions. And frankly, an Advantage plan is really, uh, it's really a, a quicker sale. And I'm going to tell you why it's a quicker sale, because most Advantage plans today have zero premium. Now, you pay, but you pay co-pays for healthcare services. And so you enroll into Medicare A and B, you gotta pay your Medicare B, uh, but beyond that, uh, there's no usually a premium that's attached to it. So again, anything that's gonna be zero is gonna be an easier sell. And so uh, agents push them and they talk about all the perks that come with the Advantage plan because it's a quicker sale. Uh, if someone's going to buy a supplemental plan, uh, it's, it's an educational sale. We have to go through and talk about how these plans work and all the different options. We don't just sit around and talk about some of the freebies. No, we talk about how is the insurance going to work. And so if you're concerned that you're going to make sure the agent is, who you're working with is paid the highest commission, actually a lifetime commission, then again, go with an Advantage plan. All right. And again, I'm being sar sarcastic in that one, but that's what happens. Agents love you to buy uh, uh, Advantage plans because it's a very quick sale uh, and it's usually just based upon, you know, what's cheap uh, and what is easy. All right. It's, it's different when it comes to a supplemental plan. A lot of options, a lot of companies, a lot of things that go into that. And again, so there are some agents that they don't want to educate you. They want to do a very quick sale, churn and burn, sign you up for a plan 20 or 30 minutes and get on to the next person, put them on an advantage plan as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, that's the way it works in this business. Okay. Agents have the philosophy sometimes of just ink an app, ink an app, put ink in an app and get on down the road. Well, our philosophy at MedicareSchool.com and other agents who feel uh, strongly about these kind of things, uh, our attitude is I want to ink the right app. I want to ink the right app. I want to make sure that when you choose a plan that I have given you the full understanding of what this decision uh, is all about. What are you doing? All right. And so that is really the only reason that I am anti advantage plans, because most agents do not give full disclosure as to how advantage plans are going to work. Advantage plans are not terrible insurance. They're not they're not, uh, you know, bad. But there are some problems that come with advantage plans that agents don't talk about. And I believe you as the consumer have every right to know that. And I believe that I as an agent, our agents within our company have an ethical responsibility to educate you about what you're getting. Okay, why is it that 75% of our clients get supplemental and 25% uh, get um, uh, Advantage plans? Because we educate everybody. And those 25% that get uh, Advantage plans, they should get them. It's in their best interest to do so. Why? Medicaid, VA, FEHB, TRICARE for Life. Uh, the, the budget's very, very tight. Those are the people that ought to be getting uh, those Advantage plans, okay? Because we educate them. All right, so when we educate people about Advantage plans and supplemental plans at the same time, we're going to talk about things. Again, on Advantage plans, they primarily want to talk about all the perks, right? Make a little uh, money back on your Social Security check. Hey, that's wonderful. But what are you giving up in regards uh, to that benefit? Usually there's something uh, that you're going to give up in that plan. Uh, uh, they want to talk about over-the-counter benefit. Uh, you can get some uh, things uh, over online or through a catalog. Uh, you have a, a vision allowance. Uh, you have de a dental benefit, free gym membership. So again, those are the perks that are talked about. But what they don't talk about, what they don't talk about are the problems that come uh, with, with Advantage plans. Okay, folks, listen to this. Just today, just today, I had three different people. One was a husband and wife and one was a single lady who called me wanting to get off of their Advantage plans. Okay, there's a reason why that happens. So let's talk about the problems with Advantage plans. Number one, you have provider networks. Now, by the way, this isn't the biggest problem. But it can be and is an issue uh, for some people. A provider network means that uh, you have enrolled with your Advantage plan either into an HMO 
or PPO. If you have an HMO plan, uh, there's some limitations and, and some restrictions of those HMO plans. Um, uh, yes, your copays would be lower, and yes, your max out of pockets would be lower on that HMO Medicare Advantage plan, but uh, you cannot go out of the network unless it's an urgent care or emergency situation. So you are bound to stay in your network. If you try to go out, you can't. Now folks, I, I would never make this up, but I'm telling you, in the last week, last week, we had a guy write into us, and here's exactly what he said. He said, my dad died because he was on an advantage plan. Okay, now by the way, I'm just telling you, that's what he said. Uh, I did not know this gentleman, and, and again, I'm not blaming the advantage plan for his, his dad's death, okay? He, he, he says there's a part of that, and what he said was that he was on an HMO plan, and there was a provider that he wanted him to go to uh, for his cancer, whatever the issue was, and it was only an hour away but the advantage company would not allow him to go out of his network to this provider. He said, hey, I think that led to my dad's death. And again, that, I'm, just, I'm not saying it did. I'm just telling you that's exactly what he said. And that's what I mean when I talk about provider networks. If you have an HMO, you have to stay in your network. I just read an article today, uh, that, um, uh, a letter that uh, Mayo Clinic put out. And basically they're saying, hey, just know we rarely take HMO plans. They just rarely do. Uh, and uh, if they're out of network, you're certainly not going to get uh, covered if you go to uh, Mayo clinic. They take very few advantage plans anyways, but certainly not HMOs. And so you've got to be aware of those kinds of things. That's a provider network. Now, when someone takes a supplemental plan, the only network they have is Medicare. <laughs> okay. In other words, the only thing you have to do is find out, uh, does that provider take Medicare? I read something today. It said uh, less than 1% of all doctors do not take original Medicare. Less than 1%. Okay. Almost every hospital in the country takes Medicare. There are a few that don't, but most do. So the point is when someone gets that supplemental plan, what are they getting? Yeah, they're paying a premium, but now they can almost go to any doctor, any hospital, any specialist that they choose to go to. And if you want that flexibility, that's why a supplemental plan could be a best option for you and not an advantage because the advantage, again, is going to have that HMO network. Now, uh, advantage plans also have PPO networks, which I think are better than HMO because there's more providers available uh, and you can go out of your network. Now, I will tell you this, if you go out of your network, it's going to cost you about twice as much money. Um, uh, your max out of pocket will probably be $5,000 out of pocket if you stay in network, probably $10,000 if you go out. But at least you have the option to do that. More, pro more providers are going to take that PPO. So if I was going on an, uh, on an advantage plan, if I could, as long as my providers were network, I certainly would, would opt towards the PPO. But again, what's the best of both worlds? It is a supplemental plan. Why? Because now I can go to any provider that takes Medicare as long as they take Medicare and go wherever I want. In fact, if you're on a supplemental plan, you don't even have to ask them if they take your supplemental plan. You're not a health care at a Humana Mutual of Omaha. You don't have to ask that. Why? Because they have to. If they take original Medicare, they have to take the supplemental plan of choice. Whatever letter you have, whatever company you have, they absolutely will take that because you have the right to do that. So I'm saying to you, that's a problem. Okay, provider network. Second issue and a problem I have with Advantage plans that you'll never hear talked about on uh, at TV through the ads and, and certainly not talked about by the agent is uh, pre-authorizations. A pre-authorization is a big deal, especially if you're in a position where you need one. And what does that mean? That means that this is someone who needs a service beyond labs and beyond a primary care doctor visit or beyond a specialist visit. They need something beyond that, such as an MRI or a CAT scan or a PET scan. They have to go to a skilled nursing facility. They need an an outpatient procedure, an outpatient um, uh, a surgery. In other words, they need something that's a little bit more on the expensive side. They need a knee replacement or a hip replacement. So what happens in that situation? On the Advantage plan, what happens is doctor says, you need a knee replacement or hip replacement or whatever. Uh, that that uh, uh, recommendation of the doctor has got to then go to the Advantage company where someone is sitting in a cubicle that's going to make the final decision. It is not your doctor. Your doctor said you need it, but that plan has to agree with that. I, I, I just last um, a week printed off a report, 61 pages, where there were discrepancies between uh, what, what, what people felt like they deserved and what the Medicare Advantage plans were, were uh, going to give them. And all those uh, went to the government for review. 61 pages of these. People complaining about the fact that they needed something and the Advantage plan said, no, we're not going to approve that. And that's what you get with the Advantage plan. You have to have about 70% of the services that you need have to be pre-approved by that, uh, in, uh, that insurance company. So who has the final say-so? It's the insurance company, a for-profit company. 
And so they can delay the coverage. I've seen that happen. Or they can deny it all out, okay? Had a lady recently needed a knee replacement. Advantage plan said, no, we don't agree. What do they want to do? They want her to get prednisone shots or other kind of shots and try meds. And if that didn't work, now we're going to therapy for a few months. And then they may approve uh, the, uh, the knee replacement. Now listen, Advantage plans approve those. But again, you have to, uh, your doctor is going to have to convince them that that's exactly what you need because there's plenty of times when they may not give you that service. That's a pre-authorization. Okay, what's the difference? If I have a supplemental plan, I never go through that. Why? Because that insurance company has no say-so whatsoever. If Medicare says you, they'll cover it, and your doctor says you need it, end of story. It goes on the schedule, and you get that knee replacement, that hip replacement. You don't have to fight an insurance company. You don't have to appeal. Uh, your doctor says you need it. Medicare says we'll cover it, and, and it's over because that insurance company follows Medicare. Medicare pays. They have to pay. They, they cannot deny coverage if Medicare pays. Just they're, they're going to cover based upon the letter that, that you bought when it comes to the supplemental plan. All right. That's a problem, folks. OK. And again, uh, uh, these star athletes and uh, all these movie stars, they don't talk about that. No, they just talk about all the free perks and say, hey, get what you deserve. And, and all these commercials, they don't disclose these kind of things, and they should. In fact, we're hoping uh, after January 1, they're going to start cracking down on some of this misinformation. But that's a problem. And then number three, and by the way, i got to speak here at a conference, I mean a workshop tonight, so I'll have a few more minutes. Uh, but uh, the last one is permanency, uh, permanently on a plan. Okay, what do I mean by that? Here's the way it works. If you start uh, on Medicare, you know, you're 65 and you take your A and B, uh, you're given what's called the trial right. And that trial right in most places lasts for 12 months. Uh, and now again, trial rights can be very confusing. Uh, uh, they vary state to state, but let's just say as a general rule, if I'm on Advantage Plan first year, I get 12 months. And after that, if I stay on my Advantage Plan uh, a year and a day, two years, three years, four years, five years, whatever, I stay on this Advantage Plan. And now I would like to get off of that plan and I'd like to get a supplemental plan. Now, in order to make that switch, in all but three states, three states, Connecticut, Vermont, New York, all the rest of the states, if you're going to make that switch from your supplemental, I mean, your Advantage Plan into a supplemental plan, now you're going to have to medically qualify. And we're going to have to ask you about 30 health questions. I'm going to check all your medications. May need a statement from your doctor to make that switch, which means what? Once I've been on that Advantage plan a uh, couple years, now I want to switch. Now what's going to happen? Now that insurance company that offers that supplemental plan that I'd like to have, now they have the right to say no to you. They can deny your application. They do not have to approve you. Now listen, when you first start your Medicare Part B, they have to approve you during a six-month window. So when you start your B date, let's say it started 11-1, I can apply for that MedSup plan usually three to six months in advance. But once my B date starts for the next six months, I'm in this thing called the Medigap open enrollment period. And during this six-month window, I have the right to have any Medigap policy I want that's sold in my state. Now, most people do it in advance, but that B open enrollment period lasts for six months. And during that six-month window, no health questions can be asked. All pre-existing conditions must be accepted. You will get that plan. But after that, if you ever want to get a supplemental plan, you want to switch those plans, now you usually have to medically qualify. Okay, but if I'm on the Advantage plan, I want to get over in here. If, uh, uh, if I uh, have waited on that Advantage more than 12 months, now I'm going to have to medically qualify because that time when I could, I could get that plan with no medical questions asked is gone. All right, and that's what I mean by permanent. I told you today, just today, folks, I had three people that called about, about Advantage plans wanting to switch. Now, here's what happened. A lady called me, and uh, she, uh, her husband, just one week ago, had a massive stroke. And she's having some issues now of getting proper care. It's going to be very expensive. And so she said, Marvin, I want, I want to get on a supplemental plan. I want to move myself. And, and my, my husband, he just had a massive stroke. And I said, ma'am, there is no company that's going to take him. He just had a stroke. In fact, they even asked, do you, have you in the last um, uh, 24 to 36 months, have you had a stroke or a mini stroke? And if you say yes to that, it's a declinable event. She is not going to be able to switch him. And I said, well, let's talk about you then. Uh, what's some of the issues maybe with your health? And I said, is there anything with the heart, lung, liver, kidney, cancer, diabetes? She said, that, well, I have COPD. And again, she will never be able to switch because there's no company that will take her with COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. And so she can't move. So both of them are going to be in that advantage system for the rest of their life. They'll never, ever get to switch. Okay. And that was news to her. 
And that's what I'm saying. You see, agents don't want to talk about these problems. Doesn't make Advantage plans bad, but there are some consequences to these that you have to live with if you decide to go in that direction. And I just believe agents, and by the way, Marvin Music is not the only honest agent that sells Medicare. There's a lot of people who have my same passion and my same conviction about this, who, yes, will write Advantage plans when it's in the right situation, but will also tell you about the, the, the problems with those and some of the disadvantages so you're prepared for that. I think I owe it to you to tell you everything about your options and you have to decide because you're the one that's going to have to live uh, with that situation. Okay? And so, am I anti-advantage plan? No. But I am anti someone getting them when they don't understand all their options. They don't understand exactly how these advantage plans are going to work. I don't think that's honest. Okay? Okay, let me just kind of close with this. Um, let's suppose that um, uh, I sold cars. And um, uh, there was a car that came into our lot, our dealership, and, and uh, it came in uh, with check engine light. Good looking car, looked nice, other than there's a check engine light. And we decided as a company to uh, un unhook the check engine light, and we put it on the lot, and uh, we're going we're gonna to sell that car, uh, knowing full well that uh, we d uh, disengaged the check engine light. Okay, what would you think of me? Well, you think I'm a pretty no good person because I didn't tell you about that, knowing that there's going to be some problems, okay? And that's the way I feel about people who just sell advantage plans only without talking about the check engine light because there is a check engine light on every advantage plan. There's some check, some issues that you need to know about that you're going to have to live with. And I think whenever I meet with you or our agents meet with you and talk to you about you, just like the salesman ought to be disclosing everything they know about that car and they withhold something that they know is, is true and accurate, something that could be detrimental to you, I think that's a dishonest. I think it's unethical and shame on those kind of people who do that, okay? And so uh, we just don't want to function that way. So again, am I anti-advantage plan? No way. Uh, we write them. Happy to write them in the right situation. We want to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting. I'll close with this. Very interesting. Uh, before COVID, uh, I, I, I've, I've probably educated, I don't know, live workshops. I don't know, probably 300,000 people. And uh, right before COVID uh, occurred, I was speaking at a live workshop and uh, had a lady in the audience that I, I didn't know at all. Uh, but she came into our local office and um, I met with one of our agents. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I, I did not help her. We have lots of agents and another agent helped her, but I was in the office that day and the agent who assisted her uh, wanted uh, me to meet her. And so I went you know, into her office and, and had a little small talk and come to find out this lady um, uh, was getting ready to retire and uh, she was retiring from the largest health insurance company in America. And she uh, happened to, in that market, run the entire Medicare Advantage division. She was in charge of the show, okay? Uh, probably a very uh, high paying position, uh, a really, really kind lady, probably a very, very sharp person. Anyway, she's retiring, uh, came to a workshop of mine, uh, comes to her office, and is now her client. She is like you. She had two options when she went on Medicare. She could either choose a supplemental plan and stay in original A and B, uh, or she could get an Advantage plan, right? Now remember, she ran the whole Advantage division for the largest health insurance company in America. And so I ask you this question, which one of those options do you think that she chose? Did she get a supplemental plan or did she get an Advantage plan? Now remember, she ran the Advantage division. Well, you probably know by now she got a supplemental plan. And I ask her, why'd you do that? And her exact words to me were this, and I'll never forget it. She said, because I know how Advantage plans work. I know how they work. And that's all I've tried to do during this session tonight is to tell you how they work. Not to badmouth them, not to scare you by any means, but to make sure that you know as a consumer when you go on Medicare, you need to know how your insurance is going to work because you will not know how your insurance is going to work until you need a hip replacement or a knee replacement or you want to go to a certain oncologist that's going to treat your cancer. That's when you're going to know how good your insurance is and how it's going to work. Okay? And by then, it could be too late to get off of that plan. All right, and so that's my, that's my whole, uh, really my, my heart to your heart about Advantage plans. So please, don't think I'm anti, but I want to make sure you know exactly what you're getting. Hey, tell your friends, uh, by the way, you can put a comment uh, in, the, in the comments here. Uh, Terry Yancic, uh, who works for us, follows up, will answer all your questions. Hey, if you need some help, 
uh, uh, we love to educate people, but we're in the business also of not just educating, but making sure that we enroll people in the right plans. And by the way, if you need help enrolling into Medicare, a lot of people ask us, hey, can you help me with that? Absolutely. Uh, our agents are, are, are trained to, to do all the A and B enrollments. If you're coming in after 65, we'll walk you through the SEP enrollments. Uh, if you're high income, you're probably going to have IRMAs. We'll help you appeal those if you have a life-changing event. Uh, the point is whatever you need. Some people want to start their uh, Medicare and Social Security at the same time. We actually can tie that together in the same application. All right, so really, whatever your need is from A to Z, uh, we'll do everything for you. There's no cost at all. Uh, remember, the insurance agent is always paid by the insurance company, not by you. We are totally totally free to you. There's no extra charge. I don't care if you go to Joe Blow across the street or me. Uh, the price to you is always the same. No difference at all. We don't set the rates. Insurance companies do that. But we do provide wonderful services. And then also, I think this is very, becoming very important. We have our own customer service uh, department. Okay, I will tell you, most, most companies today, even the big ones, they're, they're, they're farming all that out to international call centers. And I don't know about you, but sometimes it can be very frustrating. And I don't fault those people working those call centers. They're trying to provide for their family. But what I do fault are these people getting cheap labor, uh, and then you and I can't even understand them when we get on the phone. That's very, very frustrating. And we're talking about something that's very important, and sometimes there's a breakdown of communication. Again, I don't fault those people in, in those international call centers. They're making a living. But I do think you owe, I think we owe you a better service. When you call into us, you're going to get someone right here in America. By the way, uh, we're 7 to 7. The switchboard's open except on Friday, 7 to 6, and that's all Central Time. So call in. Let us know we can help you. If you uh, want more education, please go to our YouTube channel, uh, MedicareSchool.com. And I've got, I mean, lots and lots of videos there. You can get probably more education you care to. But once you come to a place where you feel confident, I hope you reach out to us and give us the privilege uh, to be able to assist you further. Okay? Uh, thanks for watching. Tell your friends about Medicare uh, uh, Mondays, every Monday at 5 o'clock. Take care.